The trailer for Jurassic World Camp Cretaceous Season 3 has officially been released to Japanese and Korean audiences, and in it, we get a lot of new info, dinosaur scenes, and little hints of major story progressions. Dr. Wu's secret experiment E750 takes center stage in the next 10 episodes, and apparently, things are really turning for the worst on Isla Nublar. <laughs> Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. Now for today's video, we are of course going to be talking about all the new footage that's come out for Netflix's Jurassic World Camp Cretaceous series. So late last night, I got all these messages from people telling me, this, the trailer's out, the trailer's out, and I didn't see it officially released anywhere, but come to find out, it did come out, it was just in a different language and kind of harder to find, and I watched it last night, talked with a few people about it, and now I'm doing this video to just share what I know with all of you. So let's go ahead and jump right into it and start a conversation with what the kids have been trying to do. So for some reason, these guys think it's a good idea to build a raft and try to, I don't know, paddle their way away from Isla Nublar. Uh, the closest area I think would be either Costa Rica or Site B or one of the five deaths. Either way, doesn't sound like a very good idea to me and obviously it doesn't end well for the kids either because a big tidal wave kind of comes up, destroys the raft and puts them right back where they started, which is basically where they start to walk through the woods again and just get really depressed. Now, after this happens, we get this really, really beautiful shot of the bracket against some dark cloudy skies gave me a very Jurassic Park 2 the chaos continues sort of feel and that sort of imagery and tone really does seem to be a big focus for these next few episodes so anyways back at the camp the kids show that they've been trying to escape to no avail they've tried a lot of different attempts they're still on the island so of course they start to explore even more of it Darius and Brooklyn I believe try to go down some sort of elevator shaft the other kids are trying to crawl through some sort of little vent or something and and then we get to the really interesting part of this trailer, at least the first half of this trailer. They actually access and go inside of the visitor center from the original Jurassic Park. And this kind of threw me for a loop because I didn't even think it was the visitor center at first because you've got artificial light coming out from the inside, which basically means that they're not only inside of the building, but they actually have some sort of access to a torch or a flashlight or something. They haven't built a fire, I guess. It's actual artificial light, which means that I'm going to assume maybe they set up like temporary base there. It's really hard to say, but I'll tell you the weird thing about the visitor center part was I did this entire video on why Camp Cretaceous could actually go back to the old park. It was actually supposed to come out today. I'm not going to lie. It was already early access for Patreon, but uh, I guess it'll be tomorrow though. So I guess I was right. But uh, the visitor center is confirmed. They're going back to the old park. Hopefully we can see more areas of the original 93 park. I actually talked way more about every other place besides the visitor center, but if it had to be me, the one thing I really, really hope that they actually uncover or look at while in there is the Velociraptor that was locked in that freezer back in the first movie. Who knows if they'll do it, but hey, they are going back to the old park. Now, with that being said, we kind of segue into a very unfamiliar looking location to me, and it looks really cool. It's this big, long hallway with these weird rugs and this decorative light stuff on the wall, and I think a lot of people focused immediately on the shadow of the Monolophosaurus, which we can see kind of chase after the kids, or at least be in the same building that they are in. Monolophosaurus is a dinosaur that I personally have wanted to see Jurassic Park tackle for a really long time now, and we kind of knew that it could have been in Camp Cretaceous because they did release a toy with it, and it was actually packaged in with Kenji, I believe, but now we have confidence information that it is in the show and it's going to be like at least in the same vicinity of these kids or at least in the same building. Anyways, I have no idea where they are right now. It could be a brand new location or it could be another part of the old park, but it looks a little too clean for that to be the case. Either way, I'm really digging it. It gave me some very Trespasser vibes, like when you go to Hammond's house on Site B. It, everything about that little moment of the trailer looked awesome to me. Now, the kids do start to access some maintenance areas, something that looks kind of similar to the shed from Jurassic Park 1, but I don't think that's what it is. And then we've also got Brooklyn and Sammy finding the door 
that was broken down by E750 when it busted out at the end of season two. So the kids end up accessing Dr. Wu's computer. He starts to explain in Japanese or Korean or whatever, like exactly what's going on and what this animal is that he's been working on. Now, one thing I don't think a lot of people caught in this shot just yet is if you take a look at the left side of the computer screen, we've got other dinosaur names or at least clinical trial names that Brooklyn talked about previously in the first season. For example, we can see here W6 something or other, N6 something, A0 something. So E750 seems to be just one of a lot of different experiments that this guy was doing behind the scenes. Now what's really interesting about this shot also is you can actually see the tube that I believe the Scorpius Rex or E750 or whatever you want to call it was housed in in season two. And we can also see that something looks to have gone very, very wrong with E750. The Indominus is mentioned right here. Here. Uh, we get a recap of the dinosaur escaping at the end of season two and then you really get something weird where it looks like it attacks Dr. Wu. Actually, it, it does attack Dr. Wu. It actually looks like it could have killed him. I mean, the Indoraptor attacks people in pretty similar ways in Fallen Kingdom, so it's kind of crazy to see Wu talking into the record like, hey, this thing's bad, it's dangerous, it's vicious, it's, you know, not really, we can't do anything about this. It's like the Indominus Rex, like only times 10 or something. And then he gets it. I have no idea how he survives. It looks like he should be dead. Homeboy got knocked to the ground. You can see him freak out for a second and like the dinosaur come into frame. No idea how he lived. But what's really cool about that is it looks like when it attacked him, they were like, that's it. They tranked it or something and threw it in the freezer. I have no idea exactly what happened or where this takes place in the timeline, but it's pretty cool to see that Dr. Wu had like a pretty close encounter with death early on. And uh, he was doing a lot of shady stuff in the island we didn't know about. But the kids are terrified of this dinosaur. They're relating it back to the Indominus. They're like, this is a bad thing. It's out now. We know it's out. We saw the claw marks in the door. And everything after that is kind of standard Jurassic Park stuff. We see a flock of Gallimimus, which is really cool. We see Blue attacking the kids in a car while Darius is like holding a tranquilizer gun or something in the back seat. And Blue's getting ready to kill these guys. So that's, that's pretty cool. Yaz jumps over a river trying to transport something to somewhere. I don't know what she's got in her hand, but I guess it's pretty important. She falls and, you know, slips or something. I, I don't think she's in danger, really. Oh, wait, is something chasing her? Oh, something is chasing her. Never mind. What is that? That's like, it's that's kind of big. Is that E750 or a T-Rex or something? That's not the T-Rex. What is that? Damn, you girl, you better jump. <laughs> Then we have a really cool action sequence that looks very much like it was made with Lost World toys as far as like the plotting of it. You've got Dimorphodons chasing a paraglider. A uh, really cool scene. It reminds me a lot of stuff that they excised from the second movie. And then we've got kids hiding at the camp and they've somehow electrified a fence around Camp Cretaceous. You've got E750. This is late at night. It's stalking the kids. They're scared out of their minds. Bumpy's nowhere to be found. Maybe she's dead. Maybe she's gone. I don't know, but Ben is there. And then you've got E750 bumping up against the fence. We've got a shot of its foot where it looks like the dew claw could actually be like another claw entirely. It's got a sickle claw, two other claws. That, that, that dew claw is like really close to its foot though. And then we've got just the dinosaur starting to stalk the kids and they're freaking out. And I'm not going to lie, the tone here the darkness of it all. I love the lightning. I love the storm. I love the kids being in peril. I even love the sound design of this, you know, genetic monstrous dinosaur E750. It's a very howly sort of, very painful sort of scream, kind of like a mix between the Indoraptor and the Indominus, or, or maybe even something else. Either way, the way they end this trailer is very, very dark. Actually, the whole trailer, apart from the beginning stupid raft scene, where I don't know why the kids would think of doing that, but the whole trailer had a pretty cool tone to it, and I I gotta say, I'm very, very impressed with how this looks. I hope it goes down really well. The second season was possibly darker than the first, but in my opinion, Camp Cretaceous season two, I, I thought was a pretty noticeable downgrade from season one. Season one of Camp Cretaceous, I personally felt was better than Battle at Big Rock. Season two, I felt was closer in line with like JP3 on, on my standard of like how I rate all the movies. So I really feel like season three uh, could be better than season two, maybe even better than season one if they have 
have really good storytelling, like everything going on with Darius's character and how his father was dying of cancer in the first season and all of that stuff. Totally loving it. Love what they've shown anyways. It looks cool. I love the idea of this new monstrous animal that has broken out. It builds the lore out. Whatever all the other clinical trials are for, like W whatever or N or A or whatever, that's really cool. Excited to see what that factors into any sort of canon in the future. But I also want to know what exactly happened to Wu. This guy got attacked by E750 and he got off scot-free. Like, I don't even think he's got a scratch on, on him in Fallen Kingdom. So that's that's really interesting. Now, obviously, the kids have armed themselves. Darius has a trank gun for at least a little bit of the time. Uh, I wonder if he does shoot Blue, because Blue's trying to kill him. And you've also got all kinds of other stuff with the Monolophosaurus, which we saw a really cool shadow of. The Dimorphodons are back. I love that. And I, I love E750 in general. This thing looks cool. We haven't seen it completely, but it look it's, it's more like the Indoraptor, only... I, I don't even know how I would describe it. it it's a little more of a freak. But uh, it, it, everything does seem to be really, really shaping up to be pretty interesting. What I think is going to catch a lot of people by surprise is how quickly the kids made it to the visitor center. I really hope that they explore more of the old park, but I did a whole video on that that you'll get to see eventually. So as far as season three goes and my personal opinions of it right now, shaping up pretty cool, man. Um, I was a little let down by some of the silliness of season two, particularly Ben versus the Carnotaurus. Uh, and I, I made a point about that. I also wasn't the big fan of how Hap died. I thought that was a bit over the top, but again, it's animated. Let's see how they do some of these ideas for season three. No idea how they managed to like electrify Camp Cretaceous, but uh, maybe they got pushed out of there by E750, which means if they set up new base at the visitor center, it would be really, really cool to see the uh, new monstrous hybrid creature or failed experiment, whatever E750 is, it would be cool to see the Scorpius Rex run through the original Jurassic Park VC. Uh, we could go through the control room, the kitchen, and like I said, seeing the the raptor that was like locked in the freezer by Tim. All very cool stuff. Um, I'm pretty excited. I'm pretty pumped. Let's see what this new season does. And I, I'm aware of by now, I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys know there's probably more seasons to come. So they're going to keep cranking this stuff out until Dominion, I think, which means we're going to get a lot of stuff that'll probably tie into other films in the series and build out that lore. Now, that's pretty much all I have to say, so I want to ask all of you guys, what are your thoughts on this new Season 3 trailer? What was your favorite part? What was your least favorite part? What do you think about E750, the return to Jurassic Park, Dr. Wu and how he escaped? All of that stuff, I really want to know. But hey guys, whatever your own thoughts, opinions, and feelings about the show happen to be, I'd love to hear them in the comments down below. Now before I go, I'd like to thank all of my game wardens, as well as all of my engine executives. I'd also like to thank all of my park workers and engine hunters as well. Guys, it seriously means the world to me that you all continue to support what I do, and I never want you to ever forget that. Now, I'd like to thank you all for watching today's video and hope you all enjoyed the content. If you feel like I deserve it, I'd appreciate the like and hope that you'll consider subscribing if you're interested in seeing me again. See you all in the next video, guys, and as always, take it easy.